Hey everybody, it's Ross and it's coffee time with Ross. Again, I'm making my coffee. I've sit here at the corner of my bar waiting for my drip, drip, drip of coffee. It takes about 20 minutes. And I was uh, doing some back and forth study, topical mainly. Uh, it's amazing to me how Holy Spirit gets you into the right verse at the right time. That's why we should read the Bible every day. Uh, or as much as you feed your physical body, which will decay and is decaying. Your spiritual person will be renewed day by day if you read God's word and obey what you read. So I wanted to share a thought with you. I ran into 1 Corinthians in the New Testament, chapter 10, verses 13. And it says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as in common to man. And God is faithful and who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. Wow, what a great, what a great God we have. He doesn't want us to fail and fall into temptation. We all will be tempted in every way. In fact, the Hebrew says, Jesus Christ, God himself come to earth as man, was tempted in all points, yet without sin. He understands what temptation is because he became one of us, God did. So he's, he's sympathetic and understanding that we're going to have temptations in our life. Have you been tempted in the last day, in the last week, the last month? I ran into a professed Christian who said he never gets tempted. Maybe you're not a real Christian because Jesus was tempted. Maybe you're too holy to be tempted. Lots of pride and arrogance in, quote, the body of Christ. Be careful. If you're not being tempted, something's not right. Jesus was tempted in all points, yet without sin. So let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and receive grace in our time of need. Look it up for yourself in Hebrews. So if you're being tempted, join the club. Join the temptation club. Now, will we fall into temptation from time to time? Of course. If it's a part of your life to be sinning and giving in, uh, something's drastically wrong with your relationship with God in Christ Jesus, or maybe you don't have a relationship in Christ Jesus. Oh, by the way, my new tracks came in. These are not new, but these are one of my favorites. And when I passed them out, I said, hello, did you, have you gotten around to it? Around to what? It's around to it. It's got the gospel message on it. These are great tracks. If you, I got plenty of them. Call the ministry. We'll send some. Any donation you can give will be great. We we buy we buy more with what your donations are. Right now we're having a journals for Jesus drive for the ladies incarcerated in prison that we minister to. The chaplain wants us to try to get some journals so they can write their notes down. Going back to no temptation has overtaken you, but such is common to man. What's, what does he mean common to man? You, it, you could say trials and you could actually put trials, testing and difficulties in this. So no temptation, no difficulty, no trial, no testing. If you want to, have you been tested? Are you going through trials? But no trial, temptation, or testing has overtaken you such as common to man. What is he saying that, that is common to man? This is common. Apostle Paul was tempted. All, all, everyone is tempted that's a Christian. And we go through testing. God will, will test us, but he won't allow us to be over-tested that we succumb because that's not his will, but it will, he will test us. And I was, found some old notes about this verse he will test your commitment to him and my commitment to him but in this he has made promises this verse has some promises in there uh, he has promised to control the testing God is sovereign he will control the testing 
not Satan. He will out Satan and his minions to test us, but God does, he allows it. But he makes promises when we are tested. But he's not going to let you be tested. He is in control of the testing. To man. And God is faithful. He says, no temptation has overtaken you, but such is common to man. And God is faithful. Sometimes we are faithless when we fall into sin or temptation. But God is always faithful. Remember that. Even though we are faithless, the Bible says at times, God is always faithful. That's encouraging for us. He has promised to control the testing in this verse. So God is sovereign. He'll control the testing. He allows Satan to test us and tempt us. God does not tempt you. He allows Satan to tempt you. Read, read the Bible. Study it out. A workman needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And also in this verse, God is faithful to you and me as, as believers. He, he's going to be with us. He has promised in this one verse in, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, to, to be our companion, to be our friend. To give us power through Holy Spirit to resist temptation or difficult times or going through trials or testing. You can, you can put temptation, like I said, testing or trials or difficulties in life. Are you having difficulties in your life? Oh, some people say, no, not, not at all. I'm, it's great. Huh. Really? What Bible are you reading? This is a very encouraging verse for us who truly believe and truly love God's Word. Not, not other people's opinions and editorials. Do you read more editorial and op-eds than you do the Bible? Do you have the TV on and get this back and forth from different channels and different news sources than the Bible? It's a little preachy, I know, but I have the TV off most of the day. I might get a couple hours of current event news and sometimes that's oh, enough or more. So he says, God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able? So he's going he's to allow you to be tempted. But he's going to be right there. And he's going to give you the power to resist temptation. And so when you're tempted, go immediately to God. And say, God, I'm being tempted. I don't need to be doing what I'm, what I'm thinking or go where I want to go. Holy Spirit, give me the power to make the turn in the opposite direction. Or if you're having difficulty in life. No difficulty or testing that you'll have will be more than you can bear. God loves His children and He's right there with you. God always puts a limitation on, the, on your trials and your, and your temptations. He knows exactly what we can endure. He is aware of how you can be tested. He knows, he knows your, how you can be tested and how, you, how I can be tested. God is so good in that He does not reveal when we are first saved that all the tests and trials are going to... We're doing. That's an interesting thought. Okay, you get saved and then He says, Oh, by the way, you're going to go through a lot of hardships, a lot of trials, and a lot of testings as a Christian. Oh, people back up. See, that's why when you see preachers that say, come to Jesus and all your problems will be solved, that is false preaching. Turn the TV off. That is not biblical preaching. God did not die on the cross and suffer a criminal's death and be beaten unrecognizably to save us from our sins so you and I could have a better way of life, a bigger car, a bigger house, a life full, uh, uh, free from problems. Much more significant reason why Christ died. He died because He saved us from our sins, the power of sin, and the consequences of sin. Some people come to Jesus to get a better way of life, and when it doesn't happen, they, they go back. I call them their, their backsliders, or not, not really. They never slid forward to start with. That's what I always say. Beyond that you're able. So He's not going to test you beyond you're able, so don't blame it on God. 
that you're being t tempted. He's going to give you the power and the strength. He says it right here, and He's going to be with you when you're having difficulty in life. Do you have difficulty right now? Are you experiencing testing or trials in your life? This is comforting verse for you. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape. Aren't you glad? What if you were just tied up somewhere and not unable to get out? Maybe you were in a basement. Maybe you were in some place where you were confined and you just could not get out. Think of this as God coming and unlocking the door. That you're reaching your wit in by wherever you are and can't escape and, and God comes and unlocks the door and He says right here, but with the temptation will provide. See, that's a promise. Always remember there's conditions in the Bible, what you and I should do, and then after that there are promises that will happen if you abide by the conditions. There's conditions in the Bible. God says live holy and do what I say in the Word and humble yourself before God and so there's things that you and I have to do in order to please God and to endure our Christian experience on this sin-fallen world. It's getting darker and darker. It's, it's a tragedy where this world is going, but it's in the Bible. Murderers, rapists, thieves, looters, people that burn down houses, it's all happening. The question is, if you die today, where would you go? At, go And uh, the guy I witnessed to a while back, I, gave, I said, he says, I'll get around to it. And I happen to have one of these. I've got tracks usually in my pocket all the time. Carry tracks. Gospel message can speak it better than me. Sometimes I don't have but a second. Just say, oh, here, since you got it, you'll get around to it. Well, tomorrow you may not have the day. You may not have tomorrow to get around to it, get around to being saved, to repenting of your sins and putting your faith in Christ. Have you done that? Go to my website, sermonaudio.com, type in ready to go, look up, you must be born again. If you want to be born again and, and, and you need help with getting to that point, I do a whole sermon, it's 45 minutes long on how to be born again. I use the Old Testament and the New Testament. So as I close, I have a few more minutes coffee time as my people from New York I love accents and I love accents from all all places I love people I love all people down in our ministry we have people that we minister to from New York and Boston and California Midwest uh, foreign countries I just I just love cultures and people so that's why I enjoy their names, where they're from, and their accents. It's just incredible. And he says, I'll give you, I'll give you a way of escape, but you've got to be willing to escape. Some people kind of say, well, they fall into temptation. I will kind of like it here. Do you like it? Do you like your difficulties that you're having? Are you being tested now as you, as you listen to my voice? Are you going through a trial that seems to be that you're not going to get through it? Be encouraged, my friend, my believing friend. Through Christ Jesus, you can do all things. Luke 137, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible with God. Do you believe it or not? The problem with a lot of Christians that I talk to, they're not reading the Word, so they're just floating around and just believing what they hear on TV. That's not what the Bible says, do Be careful who you listen to. Use discernment and make sure if you're listening to some preacher what their doctrine and theology are. If it's beyond Scripture, use your remote, the off button. Amen? Coffee time, almost. No temptation has overtaken you in such a common to man, so it's common to, for you and I to be tempted. And God is faithful. What is He faithful to? He's faithful to understand that He will not tempt you beyond or allow temptation. God is not tempting you. He's allowing Satan to tempt you. It says in James that God doesn't tempt anyone. 
but he will test you and me to see if your faith is genuine. Is it false or genuine? Is it a fake ring, you know, gold ring? You can give your wife to be a, a cubic draconia that she spent a lot of money. Sure, and maybe that's all you could afford. Okay, I get it. But it's not the real diamond. But he says, hey, I'm going to allow you to be tempted, but I'm going to allow a way to escape. Sometimes we just don't let God give us the key to escape temptation because we just want to get it one more time. Now, difficulty in your life, financial, emotionally, I know a lot of people are straining and struggling and arguing about certain things that we shouldn't be arguing about. We should be all in this one in Christ. It seems like we're, all, we're ten in Christ. That's not what the Bible says. We're one in Christ Jesus. Why can't we all act like it? But with temptation will provide the way to escape so that you will be able to what? Endure. I love that word. The perseverance. Endure to the end. That you will be able to endure no matter how difficult your trial and temptation is. You will be able to endure it. Holy Spirit will give you power, His power, to endure it if you ask Him. Holy Spirit, come, on, come upon us when we're tempted and experience difficulties and trials in our life as Christian born-again believers. We're human, Lord. You know that because you became human. So in Jesus' name, when we're tempted, have difficulties, or you are allowed testing in our lives in any way, shape, or form, we would come to you and ask for strength that we may endure the time of testing, trials, and difficulties. In Jesus' name. And I'll close with it's, you know, the way God is with us. We're going to be tested. He made us and He understands it. God leads His children along. There is a test here, a test there. But here's, the, here's, here's my thought I want to leave with you. Three, three minutes to count down coffee. <laughs> but God has promised never to put on us more than we can bear. That's a promise. You're being tempted. Are you going through difficulty, testing, trials? Read and, and send this video to people that may be struggling in different ways with temptation, with difficulties, trials in their life. Temptation is something that Jesus knows a lot about. Remember him and the devil for 40, 40 days after he was baptized? He wasn't just tempted one day. More, more likely he was tempted every day. The devil didn't leave him alone, just tempted him once. And you're not going to be tempted just once. And the stronger you get with God, the stronger your relationship with God, the chances are more you'll be tempted more. God can't take, or the devil can't take away your salvation, but he can try to take away your joy in your salvation. God bless you. Always remember, do what you can, where you can, when you can, the best you can, but do something in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to write me, 1-866-941-RTGM, call me. Call me up. Let me know what you think about the devotions and Coffee Time with Ross. Or write me, letters at rtgm.org. Facebook me. Let me know what your thoughts are. Not everybody agrees with what I say, how I preach. That's okay. I'd love to hear from you. I pray for my friends and people that I don't even know. Pray for this country, all the authorities. But pray for yourself first. And pray this prayer in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 when you're finding yourself tested, 
tried and in difficulty. God bless you and your family. Take care. Hope to see you down the road.